OpenAI just released ChatGPT's code interpreter, and this might be the craziest update since GPT-4. ChatGPT's code interpreter allows for a multitude of use cases, and you are only limited by your imagination. In this video, I am going to cover from creating website data analytics, creating QR code to analyzing code. To enable ChatGPT's code interpreter, you need to be a Plus member and enable it by clicking setting and beta. Beta features enable code interpreter. First, let's create a website using code interpreter. You need to select GPT-4 code interpreter. Next, copy the prompt from this Excel sheet to ChatGPT. I will share the link of this Excel sheet in the description below. This prompt asks ChatGPT to create a website with the image Banner 1 on top. The body should use the description. I am a Harvard graduate with a master's degree in data science and 15 years of experience in AI, machine learning and technologies, so on and so forth. At the end of the page, display text, my YouTube channel. Underneath the text, display the icon, icon 1, with width of 100 and height of 100, and embedded this link. As we are using two images in the website, so let's proceed with uploading the banner and icon images. As we can only upload one file, so we need to zip the images. Then upload the zipped file to Code Interpreter. Code Interpreter will first unzip the image file, then it will create HTML page. We can see the code by click here. When it is done, it will create a zip file. Next is to download the zip file and click on it to unzip the file. It creates a folder with the HTML file and the two images. To view the website, click on index.html. Here you go. This is the website created by Code Interpreter about my YouTube channel. I can click on the YouTube icon located here to navigate to my YouTube channel. Next, let's talk about analyze data. One of the most impressive features of the Code Interpreter is its ability to analyze data. I have this massive data set containing 6,000 rows of telecom customer data, including churn rates. This data set is packed with information ranging from personal customer details such as whether they have a partner or dependents, to how many months the customer has been with the company, what types of services they are using, their payment method, monthly charges, and churn. Next, I'll upload this CSV file to the code interpreter, which can handle file sizes of up to 250 MB. First, I'm going to ask the code interpreter, can you describe this data? Code interpreter think that the data relates to telecom users, with each row representing an individual customer. It identifies that the first column is index column, second column as customer ID, third column as gender, whether the customer is a senior citizen or not, whether the customer has a partner or not, whether they have dependents or not, how long they have been with the company in months, whether they have a phone service or not, have multiple lines, use internet service, streaming TV, streaming movies, the contract term of the customer, whether it's month to month, one year or two year, paperless billing, payment method, monthly charge, total amount charged to the customer for the entire tenure, and whether the customer churned or not. Code Interpreter understands the data very well. That's truly amazing. Then I'm going to ask Code Interpreter to perform exploratory data analysis on this data and create visuals. As you can see, it performs the data analysis and creates some graphs, but it complains about 10 missing values in the total charges which we need to address before building any models. So our next step is to clean the data. Code Interpreter filled these missing values with the mean or average value, which is a common approach in data cleaning. Next, let's ask Code Interpreter to perform exploratory data analysis on this data and create visualizations again. And let's take a look at those graphs. Distribution of tenure. The tenure distribution with peaks at around zero to five months, which represents new customers and around 70 months, which represents loyal customers. Distribution of monthly charges. The distribution of monthly charges peaks at around $20 to $30. Distribution of total charges. The total charges indicates that a large number of customers have relatively low total charges. Churn by gender. Churn does not seem to significantly differ by gender. Both genders show similar churn rates. Churn by senior citizen status. A higher proportion of senior citizens churn compared to non-senior citizens. Churn by internet service type. 
customers with fiber optic service seem to churn at a higher rate than those with DSL or no internet service. Churn by contract type. Customers with a month-to-month -month contract churn at a much higher rate than those with one-year or two-year contracts. Now, we have rough ideas about what factors influence the churn rate. Next, let's ask Code Interpreter to show us the significant factors that drive customer churns in descending order. Code Interpreter creates a bar chart in seconds indicating that total charges, monthly charges, tenure, customer ID, contract type are the top five factors. Please take note that tenure and customer ID are somewhat duplicated or highly correlated. Older customers usually have smaller customer IDs and newer customers has bigger customer IDs. Code Interpreter also alerts us that these factors doesn't indicate whether they have a positive or negative effect and suggests to use logistic regression. So let's ask it to use logistic regression and create the visualizations again. And it generates a new graph showing positive and negative impact on those factors. Not only that, but it also provides details such as the negative coefficient of contracts suggests that certain types of contracts, for example, longer term contracts, are associated with a lower likelihood of churn. The positive coefficient of internet service indicates that certain types of internet service are associated with a higher likelihood of churn. This gives you a clear picture of how these factors impact the churn rates. Isn't that amazing? Without actionable insights, data analysis is useless, right? Indeed, we can also ask Code Interpreter to advise us on how we can improve customer retention and it will generate a list of suggestions. Let's evaluate whether these suggestions make sense. For contract length, Code Interpreter reveals that customers with longer contracts are less likely to churn and suggests company to promote longer contracts by offering incentives for customers to sign up for them. I think this is great suggestion. For internet service, Code Interpreter identifies internet service customers have higher churn rate and suggests the company to probe into the reason behind it and possibly improve service quality as a result. Excellent. Code Interpreter also finds customers with paperless billing are more likely to churn, indicating potential difficulties or issues with the paperless system that may be causing customer frustration. It suggests the company to investigate this and make necessary improvements. I think these are all brilliant suggestions. And Code Interpreter can indeed be a powerful tool to improve your business or sales. If you are interested in this data set, it will be available in the description below. If you're looking for more data sets to explore, you can visit kaggle.com under data sets here. You will find many different data sets. One of the amazing things you can do with the Code Interpreter is generate QR codes. This can be incredibly useful for marketing efforts or guiding people towards your product. I can use it to create a QR code for my YouTube channel, JackGPT. I simply ask ChatGPT Code Interpreter to create a QR code for this YouTube channel. As you can see, it crafts one swiftly. If you scan this QR code right now, it'll bring you to my YouTube channel. Next, analyze code. First, let's upload this Python code, which must be 250 MB or less. Then I can ask ChatGPT Code Interpreter, could you please explain this code? As you can see, Code Interpreter tells me what the code is about and its functions as well. Next, I will ask, please analyze the code for potential errors and inefficiencies. It lists eight potential errors and inefficiencies for me. I am particularly concerned about error handling, so let's ask ChatGPT's Code Interpreter to rewrite the code to fix it. It suggests the solutions of adding try and accept condition. I think it is doing a very nice job in analyzing the code. As you can see from my demo, Code Interpreter is very powerful. And you are only limited by your imagination. If you have any use cases that you're interested, please leave me a comment. If you're interested in other ChatGPT plugins, you can tune into my YouTube video, 7 Most Powerful Plugins. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to help me reach broader audience. And see you in the next one.